All right, so today we're going to be reviewing a couple of Vio matches that one of my viewers, Supreme, uh, sent me to review on the channel. Uh, Supreme is one of my Twitch uh, viewers, so be sure to check out the Twitch. I'm live there a lot now for like night rank and stuff, so be sure to check it out. It's really cool. Anyways, first match here is on Leo's Memory. I hate this map so much, but it looked like you were going a down right build. I don't know if I would recommend that for that map. I mean, everybody that's been watching my bio for a long time knows that I'm really big at um, wanting to do that up-down teleport, even on small maps, but I feel like it's especially required a big map. So your Leo's, your Eversleeping, your, um, your Moonlit, those large maps uh, that can be kind of open. Uh, Lakeside's another one. Uh, you might want to consider going for those. And you see we uh, end up coming across the Seer here. You did end up swinging a few times because we thought the Seer was behind the pallet. And uh, you did notify me in this match that, uh, yeah, see your brightness was very low this match. And I can symp sympathize for that, especially on this map. This map is kind of sometimes a lot tougher uh, if you don't have your brightness cranked all the way up because it's very dark. Hashtag make uh, Leo's Dawn the re replace regular Leo's. But anyways, the good one too right there. You got the note off. It was a note in the open, which I typically don't like, but you ended up getting the hit off, so it's all good. You get the seer there. And the good thing about you forcing him back there is that he actually didn't have pallet boost. You were a little lucky there. Uh, but you ended up making him completely waste his recovery boost, so he couldn't even transition. But anyways... And then you, of course, follow up with a nice blink. Now, a uh, higher tier survivor possibly would have predicted that and tried to owl there, but I mean, possibly not. It was also a really nice blink. You end up taking Seer to Christmas Tree. Uh, I'm not offended by that. It's right on a cipher here. I mean, the tough thing about this scenario is that you didn't find the Mind's Eye, and this is often a very cypher rushy team comp, which is what I feel Vio struggles at the most. He does better against like quite a few rescue characters, as most chase hunters I feel do. Oh man, you are you jumped the gun a little bit on that uh, note there, but we'll see how you follow up. This should be just a regular attack. Oh, no Tide? No Tide, huh. Well, yeah, you did good going after that Priestess, waiting for that Seer to lose the Owl. I mean, the route he's taking is clearly suboptimal, I feel. Because the optimal route would not have been to go that way, but to actually go towards the two pallet there, right at that Cypher. Being that nobody's decoding there. If people were decoding there, it would have been different, but they aren't, so. But Priestess is decoding right in front of you. You can go right for that double hit right there. See, it would have been nice if you would have gotten that first note off on the Priestess, so that even when you went for the follow-up, you would have been able to get a double down so that Priestess can't just decode right in front of you like she is right now. You also have to be worried about World Portal. That's another reason why I'm, I'm a big fan of the Priestess ban, because it makes camping a little bit more difficult when you have to worry about possibly, possibly there being a World Portal without Tide. Mm, you could have played this camp a lot, but hold on. So watch this. Uh, see where Seer's at? You don't have to note that. You can actually just go for the M1 Terror Shock there. Because they waited so long, if you would have swung right at the last second there, uh, Perf would have had no shot at rescuing. So she either would have had to let the chair go away, or you would have gotten the Terror Shock. But that's because she was so late with her approach. If she was a little bit closer in timing with her approach, that wouldn't have happened necessarily. But... You end up getting the instant down anyway, so I'm not super offended. Seer ends up getting eliminated. You're at two ciphers remaining. This is what's going to either turn this into a tie or a win. Being that this comp is a Mind's Eye and a Priestess, it's already leaning towards looking like the Hunter's going to win in this scenario because, I mean, Mind's Eye Priestess, it's going to be tough for one of those to actually pull a rescue off here. If that was, say, for instance, a... Uh, completely up mercenary that would have been a little different but and mind's eye is not even the one decoding here you jumped the gun a lot on that no and that ultimate ability wasn't going to hit anything but anyways looks like mind's eye is still going for that rescue nonetheless which should happen just fine now i mean she gave herself plenty of time oh you might be able to get a note off here if you can get a note off uh, i probably would have went for more of a diagonal note. okay Hey, you actually did get the Terror Shock there. I was going to say, you could probably just go for the swing there. 
But even then, it's past half, so... But Priestess is in the area, and you just played a, placed a Peeper. That was that was a good switch, so that you'd be able to figure out where that um, where that survivor was coming from. But also, you have you'd be able to guarantee that Mind's Eye wouldn't pick herself up. So, very very well played this match. Ended up getting the ended up getting the 4K out of that. Although there is, if the survivors would have played the end game better, there was a potential shot for. A tie if there would have been maybe a better if perfumer got into the area sooner for that second rescue then there might have been a little bit more room to play there but overall nice match let's see what's the second match you got this one's on church yeah i knew i knew it was a smaller map okay and this is spawn i believe this is spawn three uh it's a great graveyard spawn and you're taking the route I like. <gasps> Jan is inviting you to team. Oh no, you you declined Jan. No, you're not gonna play any other match. Okay. <laughs> Mind's Eye. Mind's Eye. This is Little Girl. Okay. For some reason, Mind's Eye looked lo or Little Girl looked like Mind's Eye to my eyes. I am just slightly blind here. Okay. Little Girl already gets a note right there. Why is this Little Girl not placing stones? Okay, cancels the hit recovery. Oh, we're a little laggy here, but it's okay. Uh, prisoners in the area. This is a fantastic start. You should not lose this. Any good hunter will not lose this position. Unless if they get like some sort of godly rescue with the forward, but that's way too risky right now. So, but anyways... The survivors in this position will be completely transitioned to time mentality. So the thing that you can do here is if you're a survivor in this position, it's been like a five second down. A lot of times what you'll actually do as hunter or as survivors is you'll actually just not go for this rescue. And by not doing that, you'll promote the cypher rush so that by the time the first chair takes off, three cyphers will have popped and it's just a tie. Especially because you have four Gravekeeper. Those two are very durable survivors. The only way the hunter would win then is with a second very fast down on the prisoner. But it looks like... Are they actually choosing... No, they're not opting for this strategy. Okay, Gravekeeper approach. Note there. That note was way too fast. Uh... With those notes like that, I also like to place them closer to the chair. Okay, you should get a double hit here. Nice double hit. Oh, and you get the attack recovery canceled with it. That's nice. I mean, it wasn't necessary, but I mean, you'll certainly take it. I wouldn't go for a note here. Just hit the little girl. The little girl's what's going to secure that win. Because I think she's already dead on chair. So, nice. You got the double hit. And you actually got the ultimate ability on the Prisoner. Why did Prisoner use a stun there? Prisoner could have used a stun. Well, I guess he had nowhere to go. But still would have bought a little more time. Okay, forward here to harass. But you... Ah, you carried excitement. There's nothing there for that. Wait. Why is forward not attempting a stun? Forward's just letting, letting you have your heyday here. Why did you drop? You have excitement. You're not, you're not scared of that. Either this forward is perfectly read that you have excitement, which I would not expect for a vial, not to this comp, being that forward's like the only rescuer, really. Uh, or the only stunner, really. I mean, I guess you have prisoner and little girl, but that's not stuff you carry excitement for. You carry excitement for forwards, batters, sometimes enchantress, that kind of thing. You do a good job not chasing the forward here because... The forward has full football. Oh, no, let me turn around. I probably wouldn't chase this forward. I'd look for somebody else. Forward's max health and has full football. Okay, ultimate ability. Never mind. If he used more football there, he would have been fine. Now you use an ultimate ability. <laughs> ultimate ability. Now it's too late. You see, he was in the area. The, it would have been more likely to hit if you did that ultimate ability one of those two earlier times well not the first one because he footballed away he probably would have footballed away the second time if you activated it which still would have been fine because it makes him less durable but maybe that's just my opinion forward here is he's running 
He's running. Where will he go? He's running. He's running. Oh, this is a nice notable area here. Ha, huh, notable. Okay. And you get... The forward does get kind of lucky and gets away this time, but... Ah, uh, you, you pull out that trump card. Why was Grave so delayed getting out that scythe? Okay, that Grave probably should have been able to make it to that pallet. I'm just going to say that right now. Okay, looks like we're a little laggy. Oh, it's smoothed out again. Oh, wow, that actually hit out a chair. That was nice. Although, I'm surprised that survivor didn't juke. If that survivor juke, Why is the four getting in this area and then just not stunning? I don't understand. Well, you keep your eye on the forward. Okay. That stun should not have happened. There were two ways you could have gone about that. One, you could have dropped the survivor. Or two... Yeah, see, you could have dropped, or you could have swung at him because you had enough reaction time there to do it. Because you were watching him the whole time. You knew when he started that dash. But anyways, that rescue came off, and you did get a rough note here. So, the thing is, with notes like these... You want to make them, if you can't guarantee the hit, you want to make sure your note is at least long so that the ultimate ability has a chance to hit. But that's exclusively to win your almost max presence. But anyways, there's three ciphers remaining, but it all depends on how much the, the prisoner has. Oh, we're lagging here. Oh, guide on how to walk through walls, please. Help me walk through walls. Help me do blinks without having blink. <laughs> Oh, man. Forward's in the area. Okay, but he's got, like, no football left. He has, like, what is that? A sixth of football left? Yeah, that's nothing. I don't even know if he can get a stun with that. Let's see. Wait! That, that long was a stun? I didn't think that was a stun. Do y'all think that, that was a stun? Okay. You didn't have to go for the note there. You could have just went for the regular hit. The regular hit would have been far more consistent. Because sometimes survivors can juke notes. And if he would have juked that note, he would have been able to reach that pallet there. Which granted isn't a super fantastic pallet, but it was more time than he needed to stall. And forward's also in this area. All this is just kind of unfortunate. There's one cipher remaining. Okay, now it's tieable. If by some off chance... No, four. why didn't you go for that? Why didn't you go for that rescue? Okay, four in that situation should have just waited out the note. But in the end, they needed to heal before this rescue. Four went in half health. So they either needed prisoner to prime that cipher first, or they needed to heal and go for the rescue, and then body block afterwards so that one of them would have been able to do that. But anyways... You do just fine following up here. I, I wouldn't expect anything different. So, while the survivors did have a shot at possibly pulling it into a draw, you did a nice job with your camp securing the win here. So, overall, nice match. And, yeah, I had a good time reviewing your gameplay. And I hope to see more of this in the future. I'm looking forward to seeing your progress in the future as Vio. I think you have potential. So, just keep at it. And I'd love to hear from you really soon. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that video. If you did enjoy, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel for more content like this. And if you'd like to send your gameplay in to be featured in a future video, uh, you can go ahead and send gameplays via a YouTube or a Google Drive link uh, to this Gmail right here. And I'll make sure to feature your gameplay in a future video. Also, make sure to check us out on Twitch. I'm streaming there. We got Night Rank. Uh, we've got... What else do we do? We do duos, we do customs with viewers, anything you're really interested in, we probably got it on the channel. If you want to see more IDV content, be sure to check us out there, and I will see you all next time. Bye, everybody.